Where do you think silk that meets European standards comes from? China, Japan, or India? So what if I told you, Brazil, a country not at all famous for silk, is actually the place producing some of the cleanest, most uniform, and most stable silk for the high-end European market? How did an industry with no tradition surpass long-standing powerhouses? Silk, an industry demanding finesse, tradition, and craftsmanship stretching back hundreds of years. Yet in Brazil, a country with no history of silkworm farming, no silk villages, they are producing silk that meets the highest European standards, preferred by luxury brands. The issue here is, how can a country with no heritage, no tradition, possibly surpass leading names like China, Japan, or India, considered the cradle of the sericulture industry? In this video, we will discover why can Brazil produce silk so clean, uniform, and stable that it surpasses even Asia? What is hidden behind the small farms in southern Brazil that is capturing the attention of the entire Western high fashion industry? And could this be a new model of sericulture, where tradition is no longer as important as hour by hour precision and control capability? In China, Japan, or India, silkworms have been raised for generations in households, tied to craft villages, culture, and rituals. In Brazil, everything starts, not from tradition, but from a complete redesign of the entire supply chain. The silkworm farming industry here didn't develop spontaneously. Instead of each household raising their own silkworms, reeling their own silk, and then selling it, Brazil adopted a model of farms linked directly to processing companies. Farmers are trained, provided with silkworm varieties, and given technical guidance. And they just need to focus on one thing, raising silkworms according to defined standards. You are not allowed to adjust the silkworm's feeding schedule yourself. You are not allowed to choose the silkworm variety you want, and you are not allowed to harvest before the permitted time. Everything is monitored, from the mulberry leaf nutrition to the humidity in the rearing rooms, according to a single standard serving the European export market. Even the mulberry trees themselves are not planted randomly. Mulberry trees in Brazil are planted in concentrated areas with stable climates, little rain, and moderate humidity to ensure the leaves are free from fungus, have no pesticide residue, and have a stable sugar content for silkworm development. This might sound like an industrial model, and it is. But it is precisely this industrialization in control that creates a stable quality output, something that traditional models sometimes cannot guarantee. A key difference, silkworms in Brazil are raised on elevated racks, not touching the ground. Why? Because touching the ground means increased risk of bacterial infection, mold growth, and difficulty in controlling temperature and humidity throughout the farm. The rearing density is strictly controlled at 2,000 to 2,500 silkworms per square meter, much lower than in many Asian countries to avoid competition for food and help improve cocoon quality. Each batch of silkworms is assigned a code, their life cycle is tracked, and a production log is kept. If there is any deviation, the entire batch of cocoons may be rejected for purchase. And it is here that you begin to see the core difference. Brazilian farmers are not raising silkworms in the traditional sense. They are executing one link in a high-end raw material production chain, where every action has post-verification, quantitative measurement, and a specific objective, meeting European standards. Nothing more, nothing less. In traditional silkworm farming models, breeders rely on experience to guess when the silkworms will hatch, when they will molt, when to harvest the cocoons. In Brazil, there is no room for estimation. The entire cycle, from when the silkworm eggs are incubated to when the silkworms spin their cocoons, is monitored. Each week or each cycle, a technical specialist will come to inspect. Temperature, humidity, light are all kept at absolute stable levels because even a few hours of deviation will change the quality of the silk. Silkworms are raised in controlled houses. 
Temperature is kept stable at 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, 77 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, with 80 to 85 percent humidity, diffused light, avoiding strong direct light. Did you know, if silkworms are fed mulberry leaves at the wrong biological rhythm, the silk threads in the cocoons can be 10 to 12 percent shorter? Or if the humidity is too high, the silkworms will be weak, spin thin silk, and the entire batch of cocoons will not meet requirements. That is why each batch of silkworms in Brazil has a life cycle log, precisely recording the hour of egg hatching, each molt, each batch of mulberry leaves consumed, and even the time they start spinning silk. If there is a problem, the inspector can trace back the entire development history of the silkworm batch. A special point, Brazil does not mass breed silkworms like China or India. Instead, selected silkworm varieties are imported, crossbred at genetic control centers, and only supplied to farmers through exclusive distribution channels. This is to ensure that all silkworms nationwide have the same biological characteristics, uniform growth, consistent silk spinning. It's not just humans monitoring the silkworms. The silkworms are also being monitored. And here's what's important. Brazil's silkworm industry doesn't rely on craftsmanship, but on the ability for uniform control. Silkworms don't need someone with 20 years of experience. They need someone who follows the process 100%. Why? Because the ultimate goal isn't just to produce cocoons, but to produce the type of cocoon that can meet European standards right from the first time. Europe is one of the world's most demanding markets for textile raw materials. And for raw silk, the technical criteria are almost unyielding. The threads must be bright white, with no mixed colors. The thread length must be stable, easy to reel, with no breaks. No chemical residues, no bacterial contamination, and clear traceability throughout the entire production chain must be possible. It sounds like this is mandatory for all silk exporting countries, but in reality, only Brazil does it consistently. Why? Because silkworm cocoons in Brazil are not harvested. They are inspected and sorted before being approved for export to Europe. A cocoon with slight mold or a slightly yellow tint will not be used for silk exported to Europe. If the percentage of substandard cocoons in a batch exceeds the acceptable limit, the entire batch is rejected. So what is Brazil's secret? The secret is consistency. When all farms follow the same standard process, from the silkworm variety to the mulberry leaves to the rearing conditions, the cocoons produced are highly stable, a clear difference compared to traditional fragmented models. Did you know? In many large producing countries, to increase yield, cocoons are bleached before reeling making the silk threads brighter, but at the same time weakening the threads, making them prone to breaking during weaving. Have you ever wondered, does a beautiful looking silk thread from the start truly equate to long lasting quality? In Brazil, the silk is not bleached. It is kept in its natural state. They accept that the surface of the thread may not be artificially bright white in exchange for the durability, natural softness, and tensile strength required for the high-end fashion industry. So, what is more important, the outward appearance or the ability to create timeless products that last? After harvesting, the cocoons are sent for reeling in gentle processing plants without using harsh chemicals. Brazil applies a technique of cleaning with hot water and low temperatures, using only heat and pure water to soften and gently separate the natural saracen. Have you ever thought, could preserving the natural properties of each silk thread also be a way to retain the very soul of the product? The result? Brazilian silk threads retain their natural luster, are soft, and are particularly less prone to damage during weaving. After cleaning, the silk is wound manually or semi-automatically onto specialized tubes. Each tube is tagged with a QR code, storing all the batch data, 
from the silkworm variety, mulberry leaf batch, rearing log, harvest date, to the post-harvest processing steps. The entire packaging and storage process is carried out in a strictly controlled temperature and humidity environment to prevent any physical changes to the silk threads before shipping. The pupae inside the cocoons are also utilized as animal feed, with no part going to waste. A large portion of Brazilian silk is shipped to markets like Italy, Germany, and France, where the high fashion industry demands raw materials that meet nearly absolute standards. And the interesting thing is, many luxury textile brands in Italy choose Brazilian silk over that from China or India. The reason? Not because Brazilian silk is cheaper, not because it's easier to buy. They don't need large quantities. They need stability. A batch of Brazilian silk might be smaller, but it's easier to weave, more uniform, results in less fabric damage, fewer thread flaws, and lower production risk. A batch of Brazilian silk might be small, but it can be woven through a 100-meter-long roll of fabric without needing to stop the machine to tie threads, mend fibers, or handle flaws. This, for the high fashion industry, is priceless. A product like a silk scarf, an evening gown, or a high-end suit cannot have fabric flaws and certainly cannot tolerate mid-production mending. For them, what's important isn't where the silk comes from, but rather, can it be woven into a high-end product without worrying about fixing errors? A small flaw, an invisible mend, is enough to destroy the value of a product worth tens of thousands of dollars. And that's why brands choose Brazilian silk, not for its name, but for its ability to turn a commitment to quality into reality. Furthermore, the ability to control traceability down to each reel of silk gives major brands more confidence in their internal inspection processes. If a product is faulty, they can track the traceability code to pinpoint the exact source of the problem instead of having to re-inspect the entire batch. And therefore, in a market that traditionally favors Asia, Brazilian cocoons are chosen because they deliver something that traditional countries sometimes cannot. Consistency, cleanliness, and the ability to control down to every reel of silk. China, India, Thailand, named synonymous with sericulture tradition, each country has hundreds of years of history, millions of silkworm farmers, and a rich cultural silk heritage. And Brazil? No tradition, no craft villages, no heritage. So what do they do? They start from scratch, in a way that traditional countries might not dare to. Not relying on experience, but building an ecosystem based on logic. Not spontaneous, but reorganizing the entire production chain from silkworm variety, mulberry growing regions, to processing, inspection, and export. Have you ever thought, if we weren't burdened by having to preserve tradition, would we have the courage to break all the old boundaries? In Brazil, the sericulture industry isn't playing the production volume race. They chose a different race, high quality plus absolute control plus selective export. Something few people know, the silkworm farming industry in Brazil isn't large, but it's very streamlined. Some states like Paraná or Sao Paulo have hundreds of farms, but all are part of a centralized control system supported by companies or industry associations. Every farmer has access to technical documents, feeding schedules, and can track the silkworm life cycle via phone. This isn't just production, it's a form of industrial standard farming at a family scale. The contrast is even clearer when you compare it to the traditional model where silkworms are raised on the floor and the quality of each batch depends on the weather. In Brazil, everything is elevated, literally and figuratively. And the production mindset is also elevated, from doing things by habit 
to operating according to standardized processes. Have you ever wondered, in a world where stability and control are considered valuable assets, who will truly win? Those who preserve history, or those who dare to redefine everything from the start? When you have nothing to hold on to, you can start everything right from the very first time. And that is Brazil's biggest advantage. They didn't try to copy the old model. They didn't try to preserve outdated methods. They redesigned the entire sericulture chain with an export mindset, using technology, according to European standards, from day one. What do you think? In a world where everything is changing daily, could it be that the industries without tradition are the ones that will go the furthest? Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss other unique journeys of discovery.